Hey y'all, today we are looking at VR socket interactors and just grabbable objects in general inside of Unity 6 in a universal render pipeline scene. Follow along with me and create your own arsenal out of some weapons. So the very first thing that you want to do is go into VR Core. After you've hit Create New Project, I'm in the Unity 6 LTS. All right, so we've just opened up the VR template. The nice thing is it tells you right up front just to double check that you have this particular setting toggled on. So I'm just going to come over here, hit Close, Project Settings, XR Plugin Manager. I want to make sure since I'm building to an Android device, that OpenXR is ticked under Android and under OpenXR that I have the Oculus Touch Controller enabled since I'm doing a Quest 2 or 3. So it is already enabled for me. If you need a different type of profile, you can do that over here. So because that's already set up, I'm gonna go ahead and close. I'm gonna to go to File, Build Profiles, and go ahead and switch us into the Android platform. All right, and we've now switched over to Android. I'm gonna exit out. Last thing that I need to do is go into Package Manager and grab my weapon assets that I want to pull into here. And now that those are in here, I have my prefab. So if you don't have a pack like this, that's okay. I'm just gonna be using that for the sake of it looking cool. But you can absolutely follow along with different types of shapes and just standard 3D objects like cubes, sphere, etc. So this scene is great and it has a lot of cool stuff in it, but I kind of want a blank scene. What I don't want to do though is lose all the cool stuff that's built into this XR Origin rig, uh, like the main camera, the interactors, the controllers, etc. So luckily they have that kind of built into this for us. So I'm going to go to File, New Scene and I'm going to create a VR basic scene. Uh, I could do this a few different ways, and if you are not within this template, um, you can also just build a URP scene and then right click, go to XR menu and add in an XR origin and then start to build it up. But just to have it already created for us, I'm gonna use this VR basic. So let's go ahead and hit create. So now that we're in here, that is fantastic. I wanna go ahead and create a cube so that I have somewhere that the weapons are actually going to fix to. And I'm just gonna spread this out a little bit so that it looks pretty good. Let's get our sun and make sure that it is looking towards the weapons that we'll be interacting with. Fantastic. And then the first thing that I want to do is just pull in a couple of these prefabs. So I'm going to drag them into the scene. Uh, that actually looks a little bit futuristic for me. Maybe I'll just go with the standard uh, sword two. Let's pull that up. And it doesn't actually matter where in the scene this is going to be because we're going to snap it to the sockets to start. What I do want to do is just change this material over to a URP lit so that it will look correct. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. Let's grab a spear next. Happy with that spear. And maybe let's grab one more thing. Let's grab an axe. I think that'll be pretty cool. And that looks like a cool axe to me. So now that we have these items, there are a few ways that we can go about making them interactable. One would be to come down to XR and then find an interaction grab here. So a grab interactable item. I can turn that on and then underneath the grab interactable, I can come over here and find in the cube mesh filter, the item itself, the ax here. So I can do it that way if I would like. I can also put the grab exactly where I want the items to be grabbable. So let's say on this axe, for example, I could put the grabbable piece of it just right here, scale it up, and then I can grab that axe, put it underneath the interactable piece, call this axe, and then turn off the mesh render of the box. And now that way I can only grab it by this piece down here, the hilt. And maybe that's how I want to do it for now. So I'm going to leave that exactly as it is. And I'll go ahead and do that two more times. So let's go ahead and do another grab interactable. I'll put the spear inside of this one and call it spear. 
And on this grab interactable in particular, I want to go ahead and come down to select mode and go to multiple so that I can select this one with two different hands at the same time. Uh, one thing to note is I would be spending more time within the XR grab interactable components that you're adding in here. But when you leave them at none, they default to the XR interaction manager in the scene. So it's a, a pretty intelligent system. You can also do some smoothing between the position, rotation, and scale. For now, I'm just going to leave all of that off. For the spear, I'm going to go ahead and move it right over on top of this item. That's looking pretty good to me. And let me pull this out of the hierarchy so that I can scale this up without accidentally scaling the child. And let's say that's my grab for the spear. And now I can turn off the mesh renderer here. And the last one that I want to do is the sword. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and do one more grab interactable. Call this one the sword. Move this right over here onto the sword. Make this one a little bit more form-fitting, perhaps. Something about like that. Let's go ahead and grab the sword, pull it underneath. And we're all good there. I'll go ahead and turn off the mesh render again of the parent. And now we have all three items. So we want to create this arsenal that we can kind of snap our weapons into. I am, for the sake of time, just going to make this a, a few more cubes. So I'm probably just going to duplicate this out. And let's say this was a... some type of hook hanging in the wall. So let's go one. And actually, before I duplicate that for a two and three, I want to add a few things to this. So I'm going to call this hook. And then on this hook, I want to add a component and I want to add an XR socket interactor. So now that I have this socket interactor, I have a few more things that I want to do, but the very first one is that I want a point to attach this to. So this box collider here that we have on the hook itself can operate as the trigger if we would like. So what we could do is if we wanted to create an empty game object to operate as our socket interactor, we could do that. I've just turned my hook into the socket interactor. And in doing that, I can check on is trigger in the collider box and I can make this a lot larger. So now what this means is that as soon as your weapon enters the collider box, it will allow it to snap into an attachment point. Now to create that attachment point, I want to create empty. I'm going to call this attach. And we can put this right here. Now the main thing with the attachment point is on the local axes, it's going to have Y facing up and Z facing forward. So I'll want to rotate this 90 degrees. And then that will work as an attachment point. You can go in here inside of the system and set up a layer. So if you wanted this to only interact with certain types of objects, you could come in here and add an interaction layer, call this weapon, and then come back out to the hook and go to only enable weapon. And that's how you would only enable certain things to be snapped in on the ax side with the grab interactable. I could then move the interaction layer and put it on weapon itself here. Instead, I'm just going to leave this all on default and set the hooks to be on everything so that it's not really filtering out what it's looking at. Now I can grab hook two and a hook three. And the last thing that I want to do is just set up a starting selected interactable here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab axe and pull that over here. I'm going to go to hook two and grab spear and grab it 
and then I'm going to go to hook three and I'm going to grab the sword and throw it on here. Now, again, there's a lot more that we can do and dig into here, but I think this is going to get us the quickest bang for our buck. So when we launch into the headset, we should see these items snapped into the right spot with the Y facing up, the Z facing left, and let's give it a shot. So I'm going to go to file, build profiles, come over to my drop down, and if you don't see Oculus Quest 2, hit refresh. If you still don't see Oculus Quest, then go back and watch the video in the corner right here, and I'll show you how to set this all up. From here, we just want to come up to scene list inside of build profiles. Go ahead and add our open scene, remove the sample scene that we have there, and then we come back to Android and we can build and run from here. You could also add a build profile and override that from within here in the scenes list, uh, but we'll just do it this way for now. Go ahead and hit build and run. One last thing that y'all are gonna wanna come back and do is that it doesn't cause an issue that often, but just to make sure that it doesn't, if you don't have on within the XR grab interactable, the kinematic movement type turned on, as well as smooth position and smooth rotation, there are times where this is going to actually cause these items to fall through the floor. The reason I'm including this at the end of the video is because I built it out without those turned on and feel like it's a good call out just to make sure y'all are not completely shocked and confused if something goes through another item because it's not checking for the collisions and the position tracking fast enough to make sure that this is gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead, build this out, and let's take a look. All right, so we are now in our scene. We see all of our items in the exact right orientation. When I pull it down, it's gonna snap over into my hand. And whenever we go back over to these sockets, you'll see a highlighted option to snap these in. Now, because we didn't make these sockets dependent on what gets slotted into it, you can see that I could actually move this spear over and so on and so forth. So we can play some musical weapons here if we want to. And that's the way that our socket system is going to work. So I hope that that's helpful for you. The last thing that I want to show is just that this is how the two grab interaction is going to work, is that you can actually have two hands on an item at once and really get that feeling of holding a spear. This also has a lot of the built-in stuff, so if I push out or pull back, we have the push and pull mechanisms that came in some of the more recent iterations of the XR Interaction Toolkit. So I'm having a blast. I'm going to be in here for the next 20 minutes probably just playing with these weapons. And if you're wanting to customize like the rotation of the axe and the way that it, it holds in your hands, you can always go back into that XR interactable object and just rotate the child that is the axe 90 degrees to the right here. And that would be how we would accomplish that. So y'all let me know if you found this helpful and useful. Please tell me in the comments, like, comment, and subscribe if you can. I hope y'all are having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.